Good Wednesday evening to you. If you'd like to stand, we'll begin our service this evening. And uh, so good to see everybody here. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yes. Amen. It's great to see each of you. Thank you for coming to Wednesday night Bible study. River Bend Kids and River Bend Ignited. We just have a whole lot of stuff going on tonight. Amen. And we're glad to see each and every one of you here tonight. We're going to pray. We've got a lot to pray about. We want to pray for our country. We want to pray. Uh, got to hope you're always praying against COVID. Pray against it. Pray against it. It's in that Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It's there because it's a pestilence and it, it fits. Pray against it. We need to go on out of here. Amen? Amen. Let's pray against it. Let's pray. Pray for, uh, I don't, I don't want to say pray for peace because there's not going to really be any peace out there in the world. But let's pray that especially Holy Ghost filled, Bible believing people get lined up like they're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. That we determine who our influence is going to be. And it's going to be God and his word. Uh, let's remember Brother Jerry's family. His uh, great niece passed away. Let's still pray for Sister Lila and Brother Joe. They lost their brother Mike. And, uh, and COVID has caused some difficulties there. And um, uh, we uh, want to pray for them. Uh, we've got a, a lot of issues to pray about, sickness and what have you. Does anybody have a request over here on this side? Yes, sir. All right, let's remember her. Mm -hmm. We'll pray for them for sure. Sister Rita. Yes. Sister Scarl. Okay. Brother Skipper needs prayer tonight. Sister Terry. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Kai? All right. Kai informed me. This is super cool, y'all. He informed me before church. Brother GL, you know what I want to be when I grow up? And I said, what's that? He said, I want to work right here at the church. And, uh, so I said, I'm going to hold you to that. Amen. I'm going to hold you to that. Sister Eloise? All right. Anybody else here in the middle? Brother Billy? Mm -hmm. I think the Goose family might have lost two people, like in a matter of a few days. Uh, so we want to remember them. I had them on my mind. I couldn't get the names quite right. Uh, over here, Sister Sheila? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. All right. Sister Tina? All right, we'll remember him. Sister Nadine? All right. Trish? Yep, that's right. Yep, Trish lost a family member as well. Anyone else? Angel? Oh, we remember Meatball. He passed away. Angel's turtle. Oh, goodness. Right, right, right. Amen. Did I miss anybody out here? Up here? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yep. A lot to pray about. Let's pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, what a mighty God we serve. You are great and greatly to be praised, high and lifted up, and rightfully adored. We, we do magnify you. We love you. We thank you. God, a lot of needs to bring forth before you. We pray with faith believing that you are going to heal, that you're going to deliver, that you're going to bless. Dear God in heaven, I pray. I pray for those that are spiritually bereft, Lord, those that are cold in their spirit. I pray, God, that you'll light a fire in them. I pray that there'll be mercy and grace and kindness that is bestowed upon them. I pray, Lord, that the reality of their situation is clear to them. 
I pray for our family members. I pray for those that are over in Afghanistan. I pray for the trouble going on. I pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for the United States of America. I pray for our schools. I pray against COVID. I pray against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for peace among our students and among our people. I pray, Lord, that we look to you as the author and finisher of our faith. We not look for help anywhere else, but seek after you. We don't want to be guilty, God, of not seeking after you. We praise you for these opportunities and for possibilities. Praise you for your spirit. Praise you, God, for hope. We thank you for the opportunity to come together tonight with people of like precious faith. Pray you'll bless everything that's done or said here tonight in Jesus' name. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Come on, lift your voices to the Lord. Hallelujah.
praise him. Can we praise him? He's worthy. God, nobody higher than you, nobody greater than you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You may be seated. We're going to receive our Wednesday night tithe and offerings. And uh, uh, you give on Givelify, PayPal through the website, cash or checks, mail them into post office box 477. And um, then, of course, we have the pans here. Um, gold are for tithing. The wood grain pans are for offering. And uh, we, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you a couple testimonies. Uh, I, I'm aware that there's still some people a little uncomfortable with this prayer. Uh, and, I, and I hope you soon come around. Uh, heard Brother Jerry Dillon testify. They say this prayer, they start off with a verse before it, and I haven't shared it with our people yet, but we will from the book of Job. But uh, they, they, they pray this as an offering declaration. And in the pandemic, not sure to what extent, but in the pandemic, I'm gonna tell you about three things. In the pandemic, they paid off their brand new building, which had a price tag of $7 million. They paid it off during the pandemic. Another instant, God laid it on the pastor's heart to, uh, um, during the pandemic, to give a thousand dollar offering to every home missionary and a home missionary, a North American missionary in the United Pentecostal Church is someone that goes to an unchurched area and raises up an assembly from scratch. All right, they go into a complete cold area and they raise it up. And he said he wanted to give $1,000 to every home missionary that was active, and there were 100 of them active. So anybody know what 100 times 100,000 is? $100,000. All right, so he decides we're going to do it. Local businessman called him, who has already um, blessed their church incredibly. He called him and said, um, feel like there's something we can help you do. Is there something we can help you do? And he said, well, yeah, we, we need $100,000, trying to raise 100000 if you can help us. Long story short, the, the very next week, he gets a check in the mail for $100,000 from one individual to pay that. And then there's a home missionary last year, uh, in, in 19 actually, who um, they're losing their building. They have a building leased and they're losing their building. And so they start saving money to buy a building and they save $10,000. And the home missionary goes to this conference and the Lord tells him, give five of your $10,000 in the offering. Same conference, same church. And so he did. And he goes back home and as he pulls into town, he sees a great big beautiful building that uh, is, uh, the, the members of the church are outside pounding a for sale sign in the ground as he drives by. And he's like broken hearted. He said, I just gave my money away. Here's what happened there. He goes to breakfast, local businessman hears him talking. He says, come see me when you get through eating breakfast. He went to the businessman's place of business, wrote him a check for $100,000 and gave it to him. And he said, by the way, bef before, you, before you go home, he said, I got a buddy that heard about your story. He wants to see you and he went by his place and he wrote him a check for $50,000 and $150,000 is exactly what he needed to be able to move into that building. So God provided it and it all begins with a declaration of faith in the power of God. I'm excited to tell you that God is no respecter of persons and if he throws a dream in your spirit, puts a vision on you, he plans for it to come to pass, even if he has to pay for it. Amen. And he ain't scared. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It all is. So let your faith rise up. Let your faith rise up. Sunday morning gave us a little bit of a taste of what it's going to be like to not very far from now need a new place to worship. Oh, he did. We get 200 people in here, we can seat 260 on the floor. 
we get 200 people in here, it's time to start planning to build. You don't wait till you're full to build. And uh, we're not far. I mean, we got 100 people here tonight. Right at it. Sister Maria, that's incredible. That's incredible. And there's more on the way. So when you pray this prayer, think bigger than your light bill. Think bigger than just making it from paycheck to paycheck. Think every blessing you can dream because he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour out blessings on you you couldn't even imagine. Put it up there. Let's pray it. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. Won't you bring your offerings as an act of worship? On your way down and on your way back, smile at somebody. Tell them it's good to see them. Let's fellowship a little bit as we welcome the Lord and worship and giving. Come on, let's sing. Oh, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, Lord you're mighty. You're mighty. Lord, 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 you're mighty.
mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Please be seated. If you'd like to, like for the Riverbend kids to come to the front, line up, ready to go back tonight. It's going to be a great night. Brother Larry and Sister Ashley are handling it tonight. Hallelujah. All right. Here we about got everybody now. All right, sweetie, lead them on back. Show them what's going on here. That's you. Yep, go ahead. River Bend Ignited. That's students age 12 to 18. The handout tonight is not a traditional handout as such. It's mainly for you to be able just to have a place to take some notes. And um, it's got the scriptures from which we'll be taking our lesson tonight. And uh, I started trying to actually make a handout and, and uh, just wasn't working all that good. So uh, um, if if... You, after service, you'd like to have the notes, just uh, holler at me and I'll email them to you. Um, that's the way I get them out to you is by email. There's sometimes two or three that'll ask for them. Uh, anytime you want my notes, I'll share them with you. As long as they're typed up, I don't share my handwritten stuff because I'm too embarrassed because you can't read it. My writing's terrible. Um, going to handle things that perhaps may be a touch um, I, I, I don't know we'll just let you make your own decision what they are but the title of our Bible study tonight is if I am judged to be faithful to the Lord um, our society, first off, is let me let me just share this with you. Uh, we've decided first off that if anybody makes a judgment, that's only bad opinions. When really, if you make a judgment, it's good or bad. All right. So when people say, "Don't judge me." Well, that means don't say I look nice either. Because that's a judgment too, right? Right? So, uh, I'm not sure how my flowers got moved around on the side, but I may not get them in the right place, but I can't hardly stand them being over there. I got a little OCD in me, so uh, that's for real. Uh, but... Uh, um, I came across this. Now, the first two verses, I'm just going to read them and let you hear them. I'm not going to delve into them because it's actually a Bible study for another time. But I'm going to tell you this. God blesses order. God blesses authority. And when we submit ourselves to order and authority, God blesses the church. Now, Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 4 and 5, I'm just really reading them to you because I want them in your, in your wheelhouse, in your thought process um, without giving the background, and then we'll really get into the Bible study in verse 6. And as they, they being Paul and Silas and Timothy, as they went through the cities, they delivered them, that's them is all the churches they go to, decrees, for to keep. What does that say to you? That's exactly right. It's not just a word that goes out. It's a word for you to do. It's a decree to keep. That where, Here's where the decrees came from that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Now what does that tell us? There is authority and there's order. Okay, There's somebody above us that's handing down things and when we submit to them, we're in order. Look at verse 5. And so were the churches 
established in the faith and increased in number daily. All right? We have got to begin to search for opportunities to submit ourselves to the will of God. And when we do, blessings will flow upon the church. You may have the key to revival in your submission. God operates in order and authority only works in order. And if everything is all messed up in your life, good chance something's out of order. Now, let's go to verse 6. I just want that in your mind. I want you to think about it. We're going to be bringing some things to you in the Word uh, a little bit in the next few weeks. And uh, uh, I just want you to know that there are ordinances handed down to us from men and women in authority scripturally and we are obliged to follow them. God's plan is order. Now, don't you misunderstand me. The plan of God is not democracy. How do you define democracy? Government. Oh, come on. Y'all been in school before. <laughs> of the people. By the people. For the people. That ain't the way the church works. The church is a what? Theocracy, which means there's one God and he's a boss. Okay? So, that's out there. Whole Bible study delivered in a couple minutes. Now they, now when they had gone throughout Phrygia, I guess, Phrygia, and the region of Galatia, and, I want you to hear this, were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, that's not the continent, but the province of Asia. All right, it includes Turkey and some other countries around that. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So what does that tell us? Paul and his guys, somebody was going to say it. What was you going to say? They, they wanted to go there, but the Spirit said, don't go there. To them, it looked like a good spot to go preach. But the Spirit said, don't go preach there. They were forbidden to preach the word in Asia. And after they were come to Mysia, they assayed, they decided, hey, let's go to Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not, which means same thing. They looks like Bithynia is a place right for revival. The Spirit says, that's not where you're going. But they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. Now verse 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. So he knows from his attire and perhaps his accent where he's from. And the man of Macedonia appeared to Paul in a vision and said, come over into Macedonia and help us. So Paul and his team wanted to go preach in the province of Asia and the Holy Ghost said no. They wanted to go preach in Bithynia and the Holy Ghost said no. So without knowing where to go, they come to Troas. Obviously that's not where they go either, Brother Blake. So Paul goes to sleep at night and the Lord then ministers to him. And he uses a vision of a man of Macedonia. That's another country and said, come over into Macedonia and help us. Now verse number 10, and after he had seen the vision, immediately, everybody say immediately, immediately. we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Look here, assuredly gathering 
that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now, the Lord gives a vision to some preachers, Paul and Silas and Timothy. And it is a man of Macedonia, and he says, come over into Macedonia and help us. After the visions passed, immediately, let's say that one more time. You get a word from God, you better do what it says. Not tomorrow either. We're going to have to learn to be quick on the uptake when led by the Spirit. All right, because I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Assuredly gathering, gathering what? From the vision that the Lord, now get this, here I'm going to do some teaching now, that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now the Macedonian does not say what kind of help he needs. All right? He just says come and help us. Paul and his team know that the gospel is what they need. How do they know that? Because everybody needs it, and they are preachers of the gospel. That's what they do. And whatever you need, I, I'm, I'm even struggling with saying this myself, because our faith has come to a place where the Lord and the Spirit are just one option to help us when we have need. I would pray that we would get a revival of the truth that the Holy Ghost is good for whatever ails us. It is the answer to our needs. And when we start preaching to somebody before we try to tell them to go to a certain doctor or try a certain medicine or try a certain ointment, we need to find out if they got the Holy Ghost, if they've been baptized in Jesus' name, and if they've repented of their sins. Because if they haven't been introduced to the new birth, every bit of help has to start there. Paul and Silas and Timothy know if they if, if we have been called to help somebody we have been called to help them in the manner that we've been called to help folks which is with the gospel yes sir what's that endeavored they made plans. They packed their stuff. They got the car ready, gassed up. They got whatever their case was. It was the donkeys and the carts and the wagons and packed their stuff. And let's head that way now. Yeah, because the, the, the verbiage changes from they and them to us and we. Absolutely. Yeah, because Luke wrote the book of Acts. All right, but Luke wasn't a disciple. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Probably, this is kind of just a neat deal. Probably, from he wrote the book of Luke from Mary's account. Probably a first-hand count of Mary, and he wrote the book of Acts from his travels with the apostle Paul and the others. So they're a mission team, and they determine if we're here, we're here because of the gospel. All right? We're going to help people, and we're going to feed people, and we're going we're to do all different kinds of things to help folks, but ultimately, people need to have the gospel preached unto them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait off a little bit. Don't lose me. If you get bored, get up and walk around. I mean it. If you get feeling like you're going to go to sleep, wave your hand. I'll come make sure you don't. I ain't throwing rocks at nobody. I get sleepy just like anybody else. Get sitting down and stuff, but you can't afford to. Can't afford to. Let's talk about the gospel. Now, the Bible tells us very clearly what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse number 1, Paul said, Moreover, brethren... I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Now, verse 1 is a statement of review. 
All right, this is Apostle Paul. He's the one that got the vision. Now, he's the one that tells in 1 Corinthians 15 what the gospel is. Now, this is a statement of review, and I want you to notice it includes a past tense statement and two present tense statements. So the, the past tense statement is what? Which I preached unto you, that was already done, which also ye have received, that's present tense, even though it happened in the past, it's continual, I'm about to tell you about that, and wherein ye stand. Now, verse number two, are you ready? What are we talking about right now? What am I trying to tell you about? Now, I'm not trying to be, I, I don't want to move on right now. What's your paper say? That means there's a lot of room for you to fill it up. I'm talking about the gospel. This is the gospel. We're learning what is the gospel. Brother Jerry, if, if they said we need to go preach the gospel to them, guess what we got to know? What the gospel is. We got to know what the gospel is. All right, and the word gospel is... Uh, the Greek word means good news, all right? But the gospel is not just going to be sunshine tomorrow. That's good news, but it ain't gospel. The, the gospel is, first of all, verse number two. Now, you ready? By which also ye are saved. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. All right? By which also ye are saved. So the gospel is the message of what? Salvation. Y'all bad want to say death, burial, and resurrection. All right? But we... I can tell you all day long it's a death, burial, and resurrection, but what does that mean? It's the plan of salvation. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection, but it is the plan of salvation. Because how do I know that? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 2 says it is. Now that in the original Greek by which you are saved my, my father-in-law would like this because he didn't like you to say you are saved because you ain't made it yet. All right? A lot of people say, well, I got saved in 1973, but I ain't never been back to church. I got issues with your salvation if you ain't never been back to church. <laughs> say, oh, you don't be judging, folks. I'm about to show you. That's all right, too. We don't like that, Brother Blake. Some of them don't like it right now. Who do you think you are to judge me? I'm not. The book says judgment begins at the house of God. And at the last day, we're going to be judged by two things, the book of life and the books. All right. I know it makes you a little, who, you ain't supposed to be judging me. I ain't judging nobody. But you don't mind if I tell you you look nice. Ain't that right, Brother Jerry? I can say, boy, you got a nice looking truck. And you think, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I can say, you ain't had the money to buy that new truck. Who you think you judging me? <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling you the truth, don't you? I'm about to tell you, if I am judged to be faithful to the Lord. Now, that word in the original Greek, by which also you are saved, means literally translated by which also ye are being saved. Because salvation is a process, not an event. The new birth is an event, but it's not the end. It's the new birth, which means you're a brand new baby, starting to live a new life. If, you keep in memory, now that simply means if you hold fast what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. 
Now, this scripture has always puzzled me until I begin to do a little more deeper research today. Here's basically what it's saying. It don't matter what kind of an experience you had with God. If you're not still standing in it, your experience is useless. Vain, empty. Ain't that right, Brother Cody? Because Ecclesiastes talks about that a whole bunch. If you're not still standing in it, starting in it didn't do you no good. What? I, I don't want to meddle a whole lot, but the worldview of religion don't jive with these verses. Which says, you're going to run into, you, you start trying to be a witness, you're going to run into a whole lot of people that are going to say, I don't think you have to go to church to be saved. And here's what I'm asking them all. Why do you want to be saved and not go to church? I mean, really. I want to be saved, but I don't want to go to church. Let me tell you what, you got some problems. Let me tell you something. You got to go to church to be saved. Say, well, what about the one that lives on the corner point of East Outer Australia who don't have a church to go to? How many folks are living out there? Come on now. I mean, really. Not many. I don't know why I said that. But you do. Why do you think it is the first thing the enemy tries to do when he, you start getting a little cold is tell you, boy, stay home tonight. You deserve a rest. You've worked hard all week. You got something going Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And the ball game's starting on Saturday. Take Wednesday night as a break. If you start thinking of reasons not to come to church, you better get an altar somewhere because you're on the way down. And I'm just going to keep moving on like Hank Snow about right now. Verse number three, he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. What does that mean? Paul's preaching the same message that got him saved. I preach to you the same thing I received. That is, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now there's some more in that passage, but that is the gospel. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. That's the good news. But I want you to think about it. I can get up here, Sister Maria, and I can preach, and I can say it, and boy, it gets people pumped. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Like 20 of y'all been saying that the whole time I've been talking this verse. We like it. But what exactly does that mean? What's that do for us? You know, they ain't crucifying too many folks in my lifetime. I don't really have a whole lot of frame of reference for that. But it's the good news. It's the gospel. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Now let's go to Romans real quickly. I'm going to bring you to what the gospel is, how it fits us. Everybody okay? Nobody, I ain't seen nobody get up walking around. Don't be shy. If you're about to fall asleep, I'd rather you walk and, and uh, you won't hurt my feelings. Not near as bad as if you start snoring. <laughs> verse 15. So, this is Romans chapter 1, verse 15. This is Paul again. You're going to be hard-pressed to read a New Testament scripture that don't have Paul writing it or Paul in it. He wrote over half of the New Testament. And he was a murderer when the Lord found him. Come on, somebody. So, as much as in me is... I am ready to preach the gospel 
to you that are at Rome also. What do you think he's going to preach at Rome? Same gospel he preaches everywhere he goes. Why is it such a big deal to be talking about Rome? Because Rome is the cat's meow of the world. It is the best of the best. It is the elite. It is where the intellectuals, the financial district, it is where the top echelon of society are is in Rome. And Paul said, when I get there, I'm preaching the gospel to them too. Verse 16, if you don't have this committed to memory or at least know where it's at, you better highlight it, circle it, and talk about it on your paper. Because he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. You know what that means, Brother Billy? He's saying, I am not one bit worried it won't work. I'm not scared to preach the gospel anywhere to anybody at any time. I'm not scared of it. It will work. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Here's why I'm not ashamed. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. It is the power of God unto salvation. Do you understand? If somebody's broke as a joke or, or if somebody needs a job or if they need anything going wrong in their life, Brother Jerry, and they don't have the Holy Ghost, we're getting the cart before the horse trying to get them a job before we get them in the water. Because without the Holy Ghost, they're being led by the flesh and not the spirit. That's the truth. We may not like it, but it's the truth. Say, I don't know how important it is. Let me tell you how important it is. John chapter number three, verse number three, and verse number five said, except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, he can't see the kingdom of heaven and he can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Being born again of the water and of the spirit, it is essential to you spend an eternity with the Lord. Well, I just don't know if I'm ready or not. Let me tell you something. If you ain't, you better get that way. Boy, am I, do I sound ugly tonight? I'm, I'm trying. I don't want to be mean or ugly or nothing. But I've been reading some stuff in the Bible. And I've been reading some stuff in commentaries and dictionaries. The days of playing games got to come to an end. The Lord ain't sending people to us because he wants to change us. He's sending people to us because he wants to change them. And let me tell you something. You read this, read it in any kind of religious magazine you want to. People are sick and tired of dead religion. They're sick of it. And I'm going to tell you something else. Let me tell you something else, Brother Shannon, people are sick and tired of. They're sick and tired of a gospel that does nothing for them. A gospel that don't change them. They want something that's real, Brother Blake. They want something that's lasted. They want something to get them out of their mess. And they can be, be hungry and destitute. You can give them a thousand dollars, but a thousand dollars later, they're going to be hungry and destitute again. But if you get them filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they get a, a, a right heart and they get a right spirit. And if they're really hungry, you can lead them to a whole new life. So I, I don't know if I like that or not. Well, you better change your mind because you're in the wrong group because it's the truth. This ain't just about, you know, heaven or hell, brother uh, Jerry. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The Lord's interested in everything in your life. We learned it in elements class. If you ain't coming to elements class, do yourself a favor and come at least one time. We learned in elements class the things that make have applications tonight. Matter of fact, almost every elements class just rolls over into church. A whole lot of things make sense. 
He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Unto the Jew first and also the Greek. Now in the mind of a Jew, that's everybody. Because Jews are Jews and Greeks are everybody else. It's synonymous with Gentile. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Boy, I feel something. I, I, I'm not ready to say it yet because I'm not sure how it's going to come out, but I feel something brewing in my spirit. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost. There's something about the power of the Spirit. There's something about the power of Calvary. Brother Cody, I mean, I love you to death, brother, but it's more than just us shaking hands and you getting saved. There's something about the Holy Ghost that changes the way you think. It changes the way you think. And if we can get the way you think changed, it changes everything. Because the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thoughts, and I'm going there very soon. I'm, when I start teaching on holiness and, and everybody wants me to teach on dresses and hair and makeup and jewelry and all of that, and I'm going to get there. But don't none of that mean nothing if your mind's all jacked up. That's the truth. We got to get our minds in the right place. We're headed there. We're working on it tonight. I mean, at least I was till the clock. I, I mean, the... Somebody that's really feeling close to the Lord, see if you can stop that rascal for about 15 or 20 minutes. The clock I'm talking about. I'd read about them doing that in the Bible. People that really love their pastor. <laughs> that's not really how it happened, but it worked right that minute. Yes, sir. Don't do that. Yep. Yes. 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 That's why when the Macedonians said, please come help us, it might have been a pandemic. But he wasn't saying you need a drug. He was saying you need the gospel. Because it wasn't about come help us so we go to heaven. It was about come help us because our lives are messed up. And the answer to a messed up life is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is more, it is more than just signing a card or joining a club. It is something that gets down inside of you and it'll wake you up in the nighttime and it'll cause you to be moved with compassion when your flesh used to be angry and it'll cause you to love everybody and it'll cause you to, to quickly change when you're chastised. Brother Billy. Yep. Uh-uh. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. Because here's how that I'm going to describe that. Everybody in this room knows you did not get here because you wanted to be here. You owe your existence to somebody else. And when you realize that, the plan of God makes sense and it ultimately is without excuse for anybody to follow what the Lord says. Because everybody in here knows from Sister Maria 
jiggy, 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 all the way over here to Brother Blake, that when I was the boss of me, I wasn't a good one. I need, oh, I'm going to meddle right now. I needed help. And I didn't find it nowhere until I found Jesus. And when I found Jesus, it wasn't just a cool idea, Sister Maria. It was something that got a hold of my heart and wouldn't let me go. Even when I was making up in my mind, you know what, I think I'm going to go in the world and I'm going to try this out. You know, I don't know nothing about all of that out there. I'm going to try it out. But every time I'd lay down and I'd be sleepy and my eyes go ping. Oh, I'm lost. Say, ah, we ain't scaring people. No, it ain't about scaring people. It's about knowing that when you are in the presence of God, there is nothing like it in all the world, and you can be imperfect in his presence. But you can't be imperfect on the run from him. You have to imperfectly say, would you come over here and help me? And the answer is always it's going to start with the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, does that fix everything? Nope. But without starting there, everything else is useless. All right, let me move on. When y'all say that's right or preach it, brother, or amen, that's like feeding the monkeys at the zoo. <laughs> Just want to keep going on. Hang with me for about 15 more minutes because I want you to look at this. For therein, verse 17, where is therein? In the gospel, in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God revealed. What God wants is revealed when we're full of his spirit. But the Bible says very clearly, no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Remember this? God, help me. I don't know where all this is coming from. But the Bible says very clearly, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Why are they lost? Because the God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in unto them. Remember when Brother, Brother Terry told us, and I remember Brother Greg was in Bible study, and we showed him what the Bible says about salvation, that Acts 2, 38 lines up with the death, burial, and resurrection. And you know what Brother Greg said? Why don't everybody see this? Because it's the book, Brother Blake. Hear me right now as I tell you, this did not originate in the Pentecost church. It originated in the mind of God before he created the world because Revelation 13 and 8 says he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. That's the gospel. And it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. And I don't mean to be ugly in the middle. I'm just going to shoot truth. The death, the burial, and resurrection is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. That completely destroys an ideology that says all you have to do is believe and you're saved. That actually invalidates the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's get back to Lydia. I ain't even got to Lydia yet. Everybody all right? Verse number 11 of 
Acts chapter 16. Therefore, loosing from Troas, their brother Kevin, they said, we got out of town, quick, fast, and in a hurry, because the word didn't say stay here. The word said go to Macedonia. We came with a straight course to Samothracia. Well, I'm glad we got some different names nowadays. <laughs> and the next day to Neapolis. And from thence to Philippi. Three steps, they're there. It's essential to get where God wants you and to do it quickly. Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. So they are in Philippi. That's a city in Macedonia. Yes, it is the, to the church in Philippi that the book of Philippians was written. And they're hanging out in Philippi for certain days. God said, come here. The vision said, come here. We need you. But right now, they have done nothing. They just know God wants them there. So some days have passed. We were in that city abiding certain days. Verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was want, W-O-N-T, to be made. Anybody have any idea what that means? Good, I'm about to tell you. It was known that a regular prayer meeting took place by that particular riverside on the Sabbath. There was no synagogue in Philippi. It was a Gentile city. But some people had gathered together praying. Would you believe me if I told you that I believe that there's a Philippi for every one of us? There's a prayer meeting taking place somewhere. Somebody's sitting in their little closet with their Bible open right now saying, God, there's more than what I've got. There's more to this. And if we will slow down with life and open our ears up to God, he's going to lead us to them. So Paul and his team went to the riverside where there was known to be a prayer meeting taking place. And we sat down and we spake. What do you think they said to him? Now, I can't tell you for a fact what was said right here. But I can go to Acts the 19th chapter, which is a very similar occurrence, and tell you what Paul said to them there. He said, y'all remember? And Paul, passing through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and there finding certain disciples of John the Baptist, said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You know, Sister Kelly, pretty good chance that Paul and them showed up at a prayer meeting. Why are they there? To preach the gospel. I like the Acts 19 approach. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we don't know nothing about the Holy Ghost even being given. Then he said, Brother Shannon, well, how were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. And then Paul said, don't you remember what John preached to you? He, he said, this is a good deal going right now, but there's one coming. He's greater than I am, and he's going to... Woo! He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And you know what happened? The Bible said, Acts the 19th chapter, when they heard this, they're baptized in the name of the Lord, and he laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues. 
Acts 19, 1 through 6, I believe it is. Uh, so anyway, Paul and his team show up by the riverside. And they spake. They're here because there's a need. They're here because the Lord let them see a vision of the Macedonia. And they know they have what will lead to the need being met. And since we know what the gospel is, and that Paul preaches it everywhere he goes, and he believes it is the power of God and the salvation to everybody that believes, we know what he preached to them at the riverside. Unto the women, I know this might cause a little bit of trouble, but it appears wasn't no fellas hanging out by the riverside praying. tell you something, there's one thing that's going to happen in this church and it's going to grasp a hold quickly. God can reach a world through a woman just as easily as he can through a man. We don't have no me, Tarzan, you, Jane spirit going on around here. All right, I don't know what was funny over there, but I don't want it shared with the rest of the class. Verse 14, hang with me just a minute. And a certain woman, I love it. I don't know why, I love it. The Bible says many, 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 many times, and a certain one, I love it. You know what I feel like in my mind? That is a unique one. That is an individual one. That's a perfect one. That's a special one for this. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple. There's a mouthful right there. Poor folks didn't wear purple in this day. You want to know why poor folks didn't wear purple? Couldn't afford it. Right? It's very expensive. So that she's a seller of purple denotes a certain standing. She was a businesswoman, and her clientele were of the upper class even the royalty, purple wares. That's who she hung out with. But I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, but she was hungry for God. Let me tell you something. Buying your blue jeans at the buckle don't satisfy that long and only Jesus can. Absolutely. That's not a stretch at all. It's not a stretch at all. Y'all ready for, to dig into this? Y'all ready to get excited? She was a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira. Now, in case that sounds familiar to you, go over and read in Revelation about them. There ends up, Brother Billy Dunn told us there wasn't no synagogue in Thyatira. There wasn't no church in Thyatira. When Paul showed up in Thyatira, they were meeting by the riverbank. But in Revelation, guess what was happening in Thyatira? They had a church. Okay. Who, which worshiped God. Understanding, Lydia was a proselyte. That means she used to be an idol worshiper, but she saw something in these true God worshipers that she wanted. So she had left worshiping idols, and started worshiping God. What would you call that? Oh, it ain't a trick question. Who, who said it? Repentance. That's what repentance is. She turned from following idols and let me tell you something. She never had one prayer answered by an idol her whole life because they ain't real. But she turned and started following God. Understand this. She didn't have the truth. She didn't know the truth. You know how I know she didn't have the gospel, Brother Jay? Because the Lord had to send a vision to Paul to get somebody there to preach the gospel. But she was worshiping God with what she had. That's repentance. Can I tell you? 
There's a whole world of churchgoers out there that have already repented. Because they turned away from the world and turned toward the Lord. It's our responsibility to take them unto us and expound the word of God to them more perfectly. That's from the book. It's called Priscilla and Aquila and Apollos. Look it up. It's also in the book of Acts, but I got to keep moving. Lydia, seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God. Oh, I could wait off a little bit right now. She worshiped God. She didn't know beans from Shinola about truth. But she worshiped God. You know what that turns into? A man of Macedonia in a vision in the nighttime saying, come and help us. Here's what happened. Two words. Heard us. Heard us. Why is that so important? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard us. Are you ready? That word heard in the original Greek means listened and comprehended. She understood. Please, when I tell you that the gospel, the death, the burial, and resurrection, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that's exactly what it means, and it's just that easy. Oh, come on, it ain't that hard. Remember Paul said, I'm scared. One of you guys shared that the other day in the, in the text group. It said, I'm afraid that as the serpent beguiled Eve, so should you be taken away from the simplicity of the gospel. She heard him preach the death, burial, and resurrection. All right. Y'all see that next phrase? Whose heart the Lord opened. You know what that means? I'm glad you asked. Opened completely is what it means. You remember the places they wanted? Now, I'm, I'm really ministering to you right now. Hear this. Hear this. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you're a missionary. You're an evangelist. You've got a Philippi. Everybody under the sound of my voice. And some of you are a seller of purple, and you're going to reach the wealthy. And some of you get cheese and peanut butter and honey. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm not slamming you. This, the purple need the gospel the same as the poor do. I'm going to tell you this. We're often more times more discriminatory against the upper crust than we are the lower crust. But I think the Lord, he was telling us something right there. First convert, the first convert of Philippi was a businesswoman, had a purple business. Okay. You remember they wanted to go to Asia and the Spirit said, what? No. They wanted to go to Bithynia and the Spirit said, why do you think the Spirit said don't go there? Wasn't hungry. Do you realize that the time for frivolous, wasteful, go through the motions preaching has passed. I, I've said it before. Trying to keep on feeding people that are already full is a waste of time. But I've got to try to begin to minister. Y'all know I, I shared that song. I, I, they sing it up here, but I, it's, it's, it's become my anthem. I was telling Miss Jane about that Tuesday morning. I've been listening to it almost every morning. I listened to it again today where Miss Tasha uh, Cobbs play, so it says this song, uh, uh, fill me up till I overflow. I realize, Brother Blake, that's what God wants for me every day of my life. 
It's to fill me up till I overflow. You say, well, I don't know, but it does. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Lord wants every one of us to be loosed into our calling, which is winning souls and seeing them discipled. Look at here. Oh, God help me. Y'all wasn't going to do nothing tonight anyway. After church. We got to seek to minister to the hungry. It revolutionized my preaching. When the Lord told me stop trying to feed people that ain't hungry. But I, I know I, I love them and I know they love me and I know they, 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 it's just one more sermon I can get through to them. You remember what Sister Dana, you remember what the Lord told the rich man when he was in hell? The rich man said, you send Lazarus back to my brothers. He'll listen to them if one come back from the dead. And you know what the Lord said? No, he won't. Said he's already got Moses and the prophets. If he won't listen to them, he won't listen to one that came back from the dead. That's why we're ministering to the hungry. All right. That heard us, faith, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. What does that mean? What Paul told her she needed to do, she did. What did Paul come to Philippi to preach? The gospel. Whatever Paul said, she did it. But I thought you just believed and got saved. Let me tell you right now. Look at here. Verse 15. <laughs> and when she was baptized. Why do you think she got baptized? Because Paul told her she needed to get baptized. You want to know why? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know why she got baptized, Brother Blake? Because the gospel says you get baptized. You want to know why? She already died. She already turned her back on the old Lydia and started toward the Lord, and she was by the riverside. And the man of God showed up because it was the will of God that they hear the gospel. It's not enough to just turn around and follow him. But you got to be born again. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, she turned to the ministry and said, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, that's where we get the disconnect. We value who the messenger is over the message. And the messenger is not the gospel. The message is. She understood that obedience to the word Paul preached was not obedience to Paul, but obedience to the Lord. And I'm going to ask you right now, how did she plan to be judged faithful or not? How can, what it, no, let's, wait a minute. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
How will Sister Lydia plan on being judged about her faithfulness? She's putting herself out there. She said, if you judge me to be faithful to the Lord, how will she plan on being judged? By her, uh, by her obedience to the word. Because James, here we go, Brother Ronnie, I know you like James, says, faith without works is dead. She's telling them, if you have judged me faithful, how do you get judged according to faithfulness? How, do you, how are you judged faithful? By your obedience to the word of God. I've never seen that before in all my life. I've never seen that she actually, Sister Sheila, she is asking them, judge me. Have I lined up or not? Because her heart has been opened completely. So you know what she's going to do if she hadn't? Tell me what else I need to do then. But if you've judged me faithful, y'all come stay at my house. And she constrained us. Do you want to know what I read that means? She convinced us. Woo! You know what that means? Ah! They said, you obeyed the gospel. Say, how do you know that if it's simply just belief, Sister Rita? You... That, that's like, remember the book of James said? You can be all super spiritual and you can tell a man that's naked, go and be warm. And you know what the Bible says? And I, I'm paraphrasing. You know what the Bible says? He will stay cold. He's not going to be warm because you had faith he was going to be warm. But if you give him a coat, stand with me. When she said, judge, if I've been judged faithful, it was a witness of an open heart that understood that judgment is not carnal, it is not fleshly, but it's spiritual. We are not judged by the righteousness of man, but by the righteousness of God. Because Romans says, the gospel is in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It starts with faith that says, I'm not going to worship idols no more. It ends with faith that caused a heavenly vision to come and send somebody to preach the gospel. You understand that Paul didn't show up there talking about the seven seals and he didn't show up there talking about, uh, you know, the dragon and the beast and the, the great hoochie mama. I just dressed that up a little bit. That ain't what the Bible calls her, but I kind of felt some of you might pass out if I said what the scripture said. Everybody, you know, oh, we got to talk. Who's the Antichrist? What about the mark of the beast? You know what? If, if you ain't got the gospel, don't none of that mean nothing. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Well, I don't know anything about the Holy Ghost, but let me tell you. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. So what's that got to do with anything? Let me tell you what it's got to do. If the same spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. Brother Ronnie, not my heavenly body, but my mortal body. The power of the resurrection is alive in me. You, you, you love that scripture. For I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. Not I, but who? Y'all feel that? Not I, but Christ who lives within me. You know how that happens? I thought you would never ask. The death, the burial, the resurrection. It's the gospel. God, we love you. We thank you tonight for your word, for truth. Thank you for this sweet, precious presence that we feel in this room right now. 
God, I'm glad for hungry men and women who, whose hearts are being opened to you. Their lips may not line up with their heart just yet, but they're going to. They're hungry, hungry for something real, something lasting, something that the Bible tells about, talks about, and promises to us. I pray, God, that we either have received the power of the death, burial, and resurrection, or we're preaching it to somebody wherever we go. That's the beginning. That's the new birth. Let us grasp it and be not ashamed, as the Apostle Paul was, not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. In Jesus' name. Sunday morning at 10. Guess what? Elements class. And we're already set up for like 75 if y'all want to show up. We got it planned. 11 o'clock, we're going to have a great service. And uh, look forward to seeing all of you there. Any more announcements? Y'all come back now. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.